<laughs> you do look like you're on the piss. Oh god, that wasn't the right thing to do. Stop moving, Mike. That's better. Hopefully that will get me. Uh, mirrors. I've got what I was doing. On this video, I see a dog. Right, why not? I find a cyclist on the wrong side of the road. Oh my god, cyclists, they just don't have a clue, do they? What? And I say cross dresser. The cross dresser. Good morning. And how are we this morning? As you can see, typical British weather. It rained at night. <gasps> Rottweiler. Ooh, lovely. Ah, and welcome to Wednesday's first video of the new format. Oh, the van crew's coming and done already. So let's talk about motorcycles, shall we? The reason for this is that I came across a motorcycle, which I haven't seen for a long time, at the local supermarket, and I thought, ooh. Now, if I had, or let's say if you had, the money, the time, the space for any motorcycle, old, new, past, present, any CC, let me know in the comments down below what you'd have. And um, if there's any particular reason why you'd have that particular motorcycle, oh, and I just deafened myself as well. Dude, you're on the wrong side of the road. My God, cyclists, they just don't have a clue, do they? Ah, oh, dear hell. So let's talk about, this is a list that I came up with of motorcycles that I would have if I had both the space, the time and the money. Um, <clears throat> when I refer to that, I'm obviously the space to store it, the money to run them and the time to ride them. Um, It'd be an absolute blast. Oh yeah, the other thing was, I went out yesterday and my left indicator fell off because it's broken. So I'm keeping an eye on it as well. Um, which means I get to buy some new ones. Yay! Anyway, my first bike would be the MZ 50cc two-stroke. Um, I will link to all these bikes in the description so you can get an idea of uh, what they are. And if you want to get, like, obviously more details, you can have a look. Um, anyway, the reason for this one was uh, she was my very first bike when I was 16 years old. Uh, I bought it. She needed some TLC, lots of TLC in fact, actually. Um, somebody had completely hacked up the wiring harness, which I don't know why, but they did. So I had to learn to rewire her. This is where I learned how to read a wiring diagram, which I've been meaning to actually do a video about. I'm just trying to set up a rig so I can do it. Anyway, um, so yeah, I had to completely rewire her, uh, which was fun. It was fun. And I rode her for a while until I blew the crank seals out, or rather the crank seals popped out. Um, I've, I've stripped it down to fix it, but for some reason she'd never start again after that. Um, and that's the only downside with um, 50cc motorcycles. You need um, good crank seals. And if they're not sealing, then that's it, you've had it. Uh, the next one on my list, and this is the bike that I saw over here, in fact, actually, at Tesco's, um, was the Kawasaki AR50. Now, this was, this was the bike. This is the bike that all 16-year-old lads had, for the simple reason is, A, it was fun to ride, B, it was easy to ride, and C, it was easy to de-restrict, so you could get some top speed out of it a lot faster than what it meant to be because it was meant to be restricted to 30 miles an hour but uh, a lot of people did de-restrict them and they were very fun bikes then we have the RDLs, uh, the RD125LC, yes now we're talking about some serious piece of kits here uh, this was a liquid cooled two stroke and this was a beautiful, beautiful bike, it's a Yamaha uh, and you could quite often see people racing around town with these um, the other one, well the only other contender, 
contender that would race against it was the um, TZR um, and this was this is another two-stroke but it had the uh, YPVS which is the Yamaha power valve system and again I'll link to this below so you can read up on it and see what you think the next on the list we have the NC30 uh, this is the baby sister of Scarlet it's a 400 cc VFR four-stroke V4 very quick and very nimble um, the reason for that one obviously is it's a very rare bike it's, there's not many around in the UK it was mainly made for the Japanese market um, so yeah then we come to Jelly Bean obviously uh, for those of you who've watched uh, my first videos um, she was in a lot of my first videos she is a CBR 600 FH uh, one of the first super sports um, and that bike really did change the face of mid-size engine bikes of the 600s that's kind of like kicked the, the 600 kind of era off in the 1980s um, I love this bike from when I was a kid um, and the nickname that I had was Jelly Mould um, hence the name Jelly Bean because the, the, the fairing you could take the fairing and probably stick jelly in it and make a jelly mould out of it so um, and then we talk about the Norton the Norton F1 a 588cc twin rotary engine an absolute marvel of engineering in terms of the whole bike in terms of the fact that Norton got the rotary engine working really well um, the actual engine was originally used in the Commander which was a police bike at the time and the sound from that exhaust pipe oh heaven heaven absolute heaven and then obviously we can't forget scarlet yes she is uh, a vfr now i've always liked the vfrs the 750s and the 800s and the 400s obviously as, as i've just described um and if i had a chance i would have them all i'd have the 750 800 800 vtech the 1200 the 1200 uh, x which is the adventure type bike and the cross dresser i mean cross tourer cross tourer cross runner in fact cross runner um, and now we get to the last two bikes on my list and um, one of these is the Honda DN01 now this I absolutely love this bike it just just the shape of it just the the whole design of it this was the predecessor to the DCT bikes it was one of the first motorcycles to actually break um, tradition and have an automatic transmission it, this is kind of honda solved the issue of automatic transitions which has actually completely changed motorcycling in a lot of ways um, the only downside was is that they hadn't quite got it right but it did actually pave the way for the dct um, and of course it's different to a cvt which is a constant velocity transmission which is what you find on scooters and mopeds they tend to be um, kind of like an elastic band that uh, goes up and down cones um, so yeah so this kind of broke the mold on that one and I've got to admit she is a nice looking bike she really 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 is a lovely looking bike and I wouldn't mind that and of course my very very last bike which not many people would actually know about and that is the Lamborghini bike now the Lamborghini bike well actually Lamborghini was bought in 1980 by a pair of French brothers uh, called the Mimram brothers and uh, they decided to license the bike now it's not it was actually built by boxer of uh, boxer bikes of France and it has a Kawasaki engine as opposed to Lamborghini engine uh, yeah it doesn't have a Lamborghini engine at all it's just Lamborghini badged and designed it's a very nice looking bike, very futuristic, absolutely lovely. And I think these are going for like £55,000 now. So this is one of those kind of investment type bikes. Anyway guys, let me know what you think of my list of bikes. Is there any uh, you want to add? Um, anything you want to comment on? Anything you want to know more about? Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. And you can also follow me on uh, social media. Follow me on Facebook, stalk me on Instagram and tweet me at Nige Rider and I will see you on Saturday with another video and guys don't forget sharing is caring and I'll see you soon. Cheerio, bye bye.